welcome to the Cheap Air Gunner channel. I'm Cherokee Steve. I wanted to post up a video because something has really been gnawing at me. And that was the lack of being able to use my KT HPA. If you remember, This is the portions of the 2400 KT custom shop that I pieced together with a kit I got off of eBay that uses high pressure air. I had various problems with the breech, the original breech. I tried different things to a certain degree successfully was able to achieve velocities over 800 feet per second with this. Now, the breach that's on here right now was a replacement that I ordered. And if you remember from a video not too long ago, I put um, one shot through this. After modifying this breach, so it didn't sit on any raised areas. I cut it back and the very thin plastic, the very thin ridge of plastic that was at the bottom of the, the front screw that you find underneath the bolt underneath here cracked cracked out a piece I, I showed it on the previous video and I was left with ordering a brass breech that I have been waiting for and I, I did have an idea what was left after the 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 tapered very thin ridge of plastic material that the tapered head of the front breech bolt screws down against. Once that cracked it out, looking at it from the bottom, I noticed it was pretty much a clean hole. Number one, the smallest washer that I had that had an, an inner diameter hole that the threaded portion of that little breech bolt would fit through was about 250 in outer diameter. Okay, well, you're not gonna get a 250 wide washer inside of a pellet groove that's 220 wide, 22 caliber. So I took a quarter inch end mill that I had and my just with my cordless drill, kind of carefully counterboard down. I did not want to go, number one, I used an end mill because it's flat. It, the flutes on it cut flat. There wouldn't be a taper that I would get from a drill. Um, I wanted to leave as much material there as possible. Uh, go down below the pellet tray at the bottom of the breech, but leave as thick of material so I didn't run into the exact same problem where I put shots through this. If I was able to get it to work, I didn't want the plastic just cracking out right away. Number one, it had to be deep enough to get the head of the screw to sit below the lowest portion of the pellet tray that's in the breach. So what I did was I took the washer still, it had to have been a slightly larger than a quarter inch because it wouldn't just sit down in the court, in the counterboard. It, it, I could tell it was really close to being able to do that. But I, I laid it as true as I could to that counterbore. 
I put in across the top of it. And I took a punch and very gently, repeatedly tapped it with a hammer. And what I noticed was the center of the round washer started to indent. So basically what I what I ended up making was a cupped washer that sat down in that counter board. Now, after showing that, I think it kind of clearly visually shows uh, what I did and what I thought would work. Now, to get an idea of actually how small that washer is, I took a picture with a, a BB next to it. Being able to visualize with, through the picture the cupped washer with the taper-headed screw inside of it, I was able to get everything to sit just below the very bottom curvature of that pellet tray, the pellet loading area of the breech. Got everything put back together and did some shooting. Now there were problems along the way. Number one, my original breech and barrel assembly. I didn't have the, the barrel pushed in completely as far as it should have been inside of the breech. And what that caused was issues with loading pellets. If you remember, I had an extended bolt probe. Now the reason I have a picture of the extended probe by itself is uh, when I was trying to load those pellets and didn't have the barrel pushed in as far as it should have been. You know, there was a big enough gap between the back of the breech where the barrel should have been pushed up against. There was a gap there between the actual back of the barrel and the wall of the breech that the barrel should have been pushed up against. So the, the pellet was, was dropping and getting crooked and forcing the bolt forward, not realizing what I had done and not positioning the barrel correctly in the breech. And that ex extended bolt probe uh, attachment broke off. Didn't, didn't break off, it was epoxied in. But uh, I tried re-epoxying it, the bore in the tip of the bolt itself that the probe goes into is not very deep. It's relying very heavily on uh, epoxy to hold it in. And uh, having re-epoxied it, reassembled everything, it, uh, it, it, it just wasn't holding. It would. Currently, I have a bolt on the gun that does not have an extension uh, mounted to it. What all of this is added up to is what I have is what I believe a usable HPA gun. The velocities I'm getting are, are nowhere near what I was once able to get. As I said, it was shooting at one point over 800 feet per second. What I can get now, filling it up to 15 MPA and shooting it down to about 10 MPA is seven to eight shots, all over 700 feet per second. So these, I got a high of, a, it actually shot um, one shot around 750. Uh, the norm is around 720. So as far as foot pounds of energy, this is all with the uh, Falcon 22 caliber pellets I have.
that are 13.43 grain, it comes out to about 16 foot-pounds of energy. It's There are various things, I believe, that are going on that are leading to the drop velocity. Number one, as decent of an idea as I think it was, as far as figuring out a way to use this breech and using a, a self-made cupped washer with the taper-headed front breech screw, it's still not forming the type of seal that should be formed between the top of the hammer tube and the bottom of the breech. I probably need to, to make a, a replacement transfer port as well. Um, all of this is keeping in mind that I have another breech coming, a brass one, much heavier, something, you know, I definitely am not expecting to have any issues with any type of cracking with. So keeping that in mind, this is all just using my time to piece something together, just kind of see what I could do on my own. Probably not a perfect seal between the top of the transfer port and the barrel port. So those two things put together equal air escaping through the bottom of the breech, not really making its way into the barrel. Uh, the air that is making it into the barrel is probably pushing directly against the pellet. The pellet isn't being seated where it should be seated, which is just slightly in front of the barrel port. Because of the extension of the probe, the, the machining that was involved, uh, the tip of the bolt is slightly shorter than it was stock because I had to machine a radius off of the front of the stock bolt probe, machine it flat so that I could put a hole in there for the extension to go into. Well, it doesn't have the extension anymore. So it's definitely not pushing the pellet where it should. Now I've got an idea, just for giggles, I'm going to try. And that's, I'm, I'm gonna fill up the tip fill up the tip of the stock bolt probe. It's got a hole in it. What I am gonna do is fill up that hole with epoxy. And what I'm going to do is try putting a BB on top of it and letting the epoxy set. And hopefully that will hold together the BB on the tip of the bolt probe as it is now and that will make a different version of an extended bolt probe and hopefully get pellets pushed in farther and the better that they get seated the better uh, velocity readings I'm hoping to see. Um, I'm working with pellets that aren't probably they're not getting seated in front of the barrel port they're probably sitting directly over it. So that air that's ru that is rushing in is pushing up against a pellet before it could actually get itself behind it and start pushing it. So all of that put together is leading to a drop velocity reading. Hopefully I can get better readings when that brass breech comes in and I get that installed. In the meantime, just playing around and seeing what I can get with this other breach. I, you know, I, I'm kind of pleased with the fact that I have come up with something that makes that uh, plastic replacement breach work. It functions. I can get uh, seven to eight shots, as I said, in uh, all above 700 feet per second. 
Here, where I live, there's a squirrel season. I can't go out hunting squirrels uh, now as it is anyway. Uh, but my point was going to be if I could. And I got the dot sight back mounted and sighted in. And this thing was shooting accurately. I wouldn't have a problem hunting squirrels with it. So, knowing even when that brass breech does come in, I will definitely be holding on to this as a backup, knowing that it's functional, it can produce uh, above 700 feet per second on a consistent basis, produce 16 foot-pounds of energy with a 13.43 grain pellet, as far as I'm concerned, it's a great looking gun. I really am pleased with the way that it turned out looks wise. Um, uh, but obviously function is more important than anything. And what I was able to do was take a, a broken uh, breech and at least modify it to the point where it's usable. So that's where it's at. It holds air great. That's still, you know, I had issues with that before. Uh, the O-ring replacement that I ended up going with seems to be working out very nicely. So that's the situation with the KTHPA. But in the meantime, I do have something that is functional. And, uh, you know, I will get the dot sight put back on. I'll test it for accuracy. And just to confirm, again, if for any reason in the future, I do have to switch back to this particular breech, I know I can, you know, have a functional squirrel hunting gun with it. So I am still waiting on the 24 inch barrel. Unfortunately, it seems like the United States Postal Service is really just completely terrible. <laughs> uh, it did ship out uh, very late April, uh, but I can't report it as missing mail until it hasn't been delivered for 45 days. So I have to, you have to wait a complete month and a half before you can even submit another form uh, claiming that you have missing mail. So there's been a little bit of disappointment all around, but as I said, at least I've got it in a functioning capacity. So that's it. Thanks for checking out the video, you guys. Hey, remember, stay safe and shoot safe.